Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. Van Heflin in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents the true story of a reign of terror. The dramatic report of the final moments of a beast, a man without conscience, a professional killer. The last days of John Dillinger, our star, Mr. Van Heflin. Hi, uh, Hap, have a cigarette? Uh, no thanks, Harlow, prefer my own brand. Uh, a lot of people feel that way about cigarettes, but when it comes to something important, they accept a substitute and never know the difference. Hmm? Well, what do you mean, Harlow? Well, for example, take the electrical system of a car. If a replacement is needed, such as a contact set or condenser, you'd think the owner would always insist on original service parts, exactly the same as those originally installed by the car manufacturer. Well, I sure would, Harlow. And if your car is Autolite equipped, as millions are, you should ask for and insist on Autolite original service parts, which work as a perfect team in harmony with the complete electrical system. So, friends, no matter what make car you own, for safe, smooth, efficient performance, always insist on original service parts, the same as those first installed by the car manufacturer. It pays to buy the best. And the best for your Autolite-equipped car is Autolite original service parts. Remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite presents transcribed Mr. Van Heflin in The Last Days of John Dillinger, hoping once again to keep you in suspense. Don't. Don't. No more. No more in the name of hell. Hold him, Herbie. Sure. Please. Please. I... No. Yeah, let him go. Sure. How you feel, eh? How you feel, copper? Come on, come on, tell me so I know. <laughs> oh, no, you oughtn't to laugh at him, Hurry, He's hurt. Hey, Ernie, you hurt? You hurt, Ernie? How's it feel to be in the cell of your own jailhouse, Ernie? Look, Dylan... No, 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 you look. On your feet and take a look, Ernie. Uh, uh, up, Ernie, uh, you're up. Uh, don't hit me anymore. Take a look. You see the pretty pistol, Ernie? It's wood. Yeah. Wood. Yeah, I, I, I whittled it, Ernie. Wood. Right after I whittled that boat for your kid, I made me this gun. I put some shoe polish on it. Mine. Yeah, yeah, he's neat. Sure. <laughs> and now we got a real gun, Ernie, yours. And we're going to get out of here, out of the jail. Everybody's screaming that nobody's going to break out of. Come on, let's go, Ernie. Let's go. Let me tell you something, Copper. From now on, from the second I do this, <laughs> from just then on... Just listen to what I say. Don't repeat it. Just listen to it and do it. I said, let's go. That means we're getting out. I said, keep your mouth shut. It means you say just one word and you're dead. And the last part of it is, when I'm ready to kill you, I'll let you watch. That's fair enough? <laughs> now, let's go. Shut up. Find a road that don't look too travel, Herb. Turn into it. Sure. Don't kill me, Johnny. No? Don't kill me, Johnny. Don't kill me. Johnny, don't kill me, Johnny. <laughs> Here? Looks okay. Well, now, why are you crying, Ernie? Real good hostage like you? You told us where everybody was, where the arsenal was, where the keys to the warden's car was... Well, you know, you're a nice boy. Don't kill me, Johnny. Okay, Herb. Out, Ernie. Don't kill me, Johnny. Out, Ernie. Uh, now, get up. You want a cigarette? Light? <laughs> Goodbye, Ernie. Let him walk back, Herb. Let's go. Don't kill me. Johnny, don't kill me. Johnny, don't kill me. Don't kill me. Don't. I like you. I know, I can tell. It's one of the reasons I like you. Come on, Johnny, let's scram from this joint. Let's get going. Give Herbie another piece of apple pie, huh? All right. 
Want some more coffee? No, thank you, ma'am. Don't rush Johnny and me, mister. Hi. Pretty girl like you slinging in a road diner like this. Don't do that, Johnny. What? The truck drivers and the tourists say... They say just what you said. It don't become you. What does become me, Molly? Me? Listen. Huh? You walked in here half an hour ago, and I said to myself, it's John Dillinger. Fellow whose picture I see in the papers with that smile on his face. Same smile as you got now. And you know what about that smile, Johnny? Huh? It means you've been there and you've seen it. Whatever there was to see. And nobody's going to fool you. Johnny, what's down the end of the road? You want to see? The way you'll show me. I'm coming back for you, Molly. Yeah, I know. First, I got to see some people up the road, a couple hundred miles up the road. People expecting me. And, and you're coming back? Yeah. Johnny, Johnny, why don't you join the dance? Why don't you... Enjoying you... yourself, baby face? <laughs> <laughs> the time we teamed together, Johnny, I've been jumping for joy. I just You're want you to... You're dancing on a grave. Herbie's grave. Yeah, well, Herbie shouldn't have tried a bank job all alone. He should have come up here to Wisconsin with you and your friends, had a party, had fun. Yeah, I should have had a party. Should have had fun. You miss Annie, huh? Lonesome for Annie, Johnny? You know, if Annie Sage is here, you... Yeah, you know, I wouldn't. She's waiting for me in Chicago. Real soon, I'll drop in on her. When? One more day here, then we move out. Oh, are you kidding? Party's only four days old. We're just beginning... Ah, where are you going to have it better, Johnny? Look, who's going to think to look for you in a crummy roadhouse in the Wisconsin woods? We could stay here for weeks. You could send for Annie. No, no, I like Annie with Chicago around her. Don't push it, Johnny. Every cop in Illinois is watering at the mouth for a chance. So you got a you uh, you got a liking for my face, huh? My face, you like it? Oh, sure, Johnny. Well, sure. You like my face? Annie likes my face. That Molly <laughs> and the cops, <laughs> they like my face. What are you trying to say? Well, there's say? a doc in Chicago, a plastic surgeon. For five grand, he'll make me a new face. And then I don't run. I, I don't hide. Then I have me a party in Chicago like you never dreamed. Like you never... Where's Dillinger? Where's John Dillinger? I gotta see John, John Dillinger. Uh, who's... I'm Dillinger. You gotta get out of here, Mr. Dillinger. Why? Cops. The back roads is full of them. Cars with cops in them. And plain clothes guys. And they're heading here. I ran all the way through the woods. You gotta get out of here, Mr. Dillinger. How close are they, kid? Uh, up at Point Racine. They got to take the dirt road's detour before they... That's why I cut across the hill and through the woods. I ran all the way. How did you know I was here, kid? Everybody around here knows you're here, Mr. Dillinger. The big party you're having, this roadhouse open in the middle of winter, and somebody must have pigeoned on you. Call the but not you. Oh, no, not me. That's one of the cars, Mr. Dillinger. I just bet it's Kid. Nothing. Yes, sir? You're a good boy, and I'm going to make you one of my gang. You like that? Oh, sure, sure. And I'm, I'm going to give you my gun. Here, kid, you take it. What's your name? Uh, Paul. Paul Harvey. Well, I tell you what, Paul. You go out there, and if that's really the cops, like the way you said, I want you to stall them. Uh, how'll I do that, Mr. Dillinger? You think of something, Paul, because you're the kind of a guy I got around me. Guys who think of something when the chips are down. Guys like you. Go on, Paul. Do what Johnny Dillinger told you. Out the back window, baby, and bring your gun. Cover me. Yeah, yeah, jump. Oh, oh, you're not shoot. Hit the ground. You see him? No. Yeah, now I see him. Then do it, baby. I want him closer. You two men, get up. 
Get up and put up there. See you around, baby face. Glad you had fun at my party. <laughs> you like it, huh, Jimmy? You like what I've done to your face? Here, let me wipe off the mirror. You like it, huh? Uh, you're a butcher, Doc. You're a drunken son of a Chicago butcher. You're a slaughterhouse man. Oh, you just hold your tongue, Jimmy. Bang, Piquet. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to tell you something. 5000 Doc. That's what you agreed on, that's what you get. Now, you listen to me. You died there on my operating table. You died for sure. You died stone dead. What are you talking about? My assistant and that slob that gave you too much ether, and you were dead. And I thought fast, and I grabbed a hemostat and pulled your tongue over your teeth. Then I gave you artificial respiration. You were stone dead, Johnny. And I brought you back to life. <laughs> You're a drunken butcher, Doc. <laughs> Go on, give him the five grand PK. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot, Johnny. Now, Johnny. Yeah? Uh, your fingertips. Hmm. A new face don't do you any good without you got new fingerprints. That's right, Doc. You're thinking, Doc. Yeah. I got it already. Right over here. Come on, Johnny. Yeah. Take a look. A bowl of acid, Johnny. All you got to well, do. Well, let's, let's, let's get it over sure, with. Sure, 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 Johnny. Now you just roll back your sleeves. That's it. Now, give me your hand. No, 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 no. Don't hold back, Johnny. Just give me your hands. That's it. And relax your fingers and... Ah! Autolite is bringing you Mr. Van Heflin in The Last Days of John Dillinger... Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Say, uh, Hap, ever hear of a person buying cigarettes without asking for a particular brand? Never did, Harlow. Well, some of these same folks accept parts for their car's electrical systems without even asking the name. They don't insist on parts exactly like those specified by the car manufacturer? That's right, Hap. Well, then how can they be sure to get top performance, Harlow? They can't, and they don't, Hap. Original service parts are designed and built to the specifications of the car manufacturer to work as a team in perfect harmony. That's why it pays to always insist on original service parts when replacements are needed. And that means Autolite original service parts for my Autolite-equipped car. Right, Hap, because Autolite designs and builds complete electrical systems for many leading makes of our finest cars, trucks, and tractors. And all Autolite units, like the coil, distributor, contact set, condenser, and regulator, are designed to work together as a perfect team. So, regardless of the make of car you own, it always pays to get only original service parts, like those first installed by the manufacturer. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Van Heflin in Elliot Lewis's production of The Last Days of John Dillinger, a true report well calculated to keep you in suspense. Look at you. Honey. Look at you. Honey. Hands bandage your face. Get away from me. All right. All right, I will. John. John. What? You broke Crown Point weeks ago. How come you're just showing up? 
I gotta explain it to you, Annie. Or else out. You heard Annie, uh... Well, you, you read the papers. What you... happened in Wisconsin? Four days. Babyface came around and told me all about it. Then this crazy operation. How long? A week? Two? Where have you been all this time? Uh, yeah, yeah, like I'm a child. That's right. Where have you been all this time? Well, I'm here now, so what... Another did... woman? Oh. You can tell me, Johnny. Now, look. You can tell me anything, Johnny. You know you can. You always said you could Something tell... Something happens when I'm around you. What? Tell me what? I don't know. Tell me what, Johnny? The reason I waited so long to come to you. Why I can't stay away. Need me, Johnny? The thing gets all right. It gets warm and nothing's exciting. Hungry, Johnny? Funny, up in Wisconsin, I was running away, you know, with Babyface after he let that FBI guy have it. I'll put and some I, coffee I was running. Up. Running, and you know what went through my mind? Kind of real crazy. This, this oil cloth on the table, the patterns in it. The blocks and how you look at me one way and then they, they look like they're they're coming out Cut from the you a table. Nice piece of pie. And they, they, they keep staring and they, they, they change. Johnny. You do you know what I mean? Johnny. I... Yeah. Don't worry about anything. Okay. Everything's gonna be all right. Sure. And later you can cry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd like to see you laugh, Johnny. Oh, you make me laugh. Am I funny? You think I'm funny? No, oh, you're just like a kid. <laughs> Molly. Mm -hmm. You glad you quit that job and come up here to Chicago? Huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why you always sit on the floor like that, huh? Oh, listen to him. Huh? Crosby. I swear you, you, you're just like a kid. <laughs> Bright eye. Bright eye, Johnny? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Johnny, being here in Chicago and knowing what it's like where the road goes. <laughs> Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> a man like you. <laughs> you're like a giant, aren't you, Johnny? <laughs> Not afraid of anything. This is Molly. Looking for you to kill you, and you're not afraid of anything. <laughs> John Dillinger. Come over here. Johnny. How many men? Uh? How many men dead because of you? Uh, Thirteen. So? The sheriff and the deputies and the cops and the FBI and, <laughs> and everybody. Looking for you to kill you. And you're not afraid. Sit there. Sure, Johnny. You it, Johnny. Yes? You're Molly? Yes, what... I'm Anna Sage. Johnny? Johnny. Till you blew in. Till a month ago when he brought you here. Ask me inside, Molly, so as we can have a heart-to-heart -heart compare notes. Share. All right. Come in. I was just having a bottle of beer. You want one? <laughs> You want one? Sure, honey. Because I can cry in it how pretty you are. You like Chicago? Crazy boy. Your beer. Dull. A real dull. Johnny's a picker, he is. And he gave you Chicago. Drink your drink, say your say, and then get out. I broke up something coming here right at this time, didn't I, Molly? Yeah. Something real nice. And you can't wait till Johnny again. No. <laughs> Johnny told me about you. Oh? I'm sorry for you. 
Tell me all the ways you're sorry for me. Only one. What you haven't got with Johnny. And you have. Crazy for it. From the time he walked in the diner where I worked, I was alive. Advice from an older woman, honey. Make it a memory. Get out of Chicago. Leave Johnny. For you? Leave a man like that to Leave something... Leave him. Keep away from him. Did you hear me? You... What are you... I just broke my beer bottle, Annie. The way I once saw a man do in a bar I worked in in Des Moines. He broke this beer bottle. And he held it close to this woman's face. Stay away from me. He held it real close, right under her eye. And first he made a little scar. Just a small scar. Don't. Don't. Like that. Don't. You. You get out of here. And you leave Johnny and me alone. Else one day the mood strikes, I'll tell Johnny to kill you. Get out, Annie. Bureau of Investigation, Carl A. speaking. You want John Dillinger? Who is this? Anna Sage. You want Johnny? You uh, giving him to us, Annie, for the $5,000? Not for the money. I don't care about the money. I don't want Johnny anymore, that's all. Sure, Annie. Now, where... Uh... I'll set him up for you. I'll call you later, where and when. Well, listen, Annie... You just stay by your phone, and I'll make you a hero. Johnny? What? Mind if I take a sip of your beer first? Don't do that. What am I doing? Acting girlish. Sweet. Just don't do it, Annie. Just hand me the beer and... Here. Keep... Thanks. Oh, I never knew Chicago was so hot. Why don't we go out, Johnny? Cooped up in here, sweating out the heat, clawing at each other like we do. Why don't we go out? You're crazy. Well, we're crazy to stay in here. We'd go to a movie, a nice air-conditioned movie. Cool off for a while. I go out of here and somebody. Who's going to know pick... you're sitting in a dark movie theater? What you had done to your face and 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 some dark glasses? Nobody's going to recognize you. Right here in the paper, the Biograph Theater picture with Clark Gable and Myrna Lower. You like Clark Gable, don't you, Johnny? A Disney cartoon. Yeah. For a while, you could enjoy yourself and get out of the heat, Johnny. What? You ask Molly to come along if you want. <laughs> Annie? I mean Annie? it. I mean it. You go call up Molly and ask her to meet us here, and then the three of us will go to a movie. And Yeah, Molly told me you was around. Is, is, that, is that how you got that little cut under your eye, honey? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no sense anybody being mad at anybody. No. No, there ain't. I'm glad you figured that out. So why don't the three of us get together for a movie tonight? Sure. Sure, I'll call Molly. Just sit and watch the cartoon, Annie. Where are you going? Get some candy. You want some candy, Molly? No. I got a figure to worry about. Excuse me, then. Bureau of Investigation, Cowley speaking. Anna Sage, Mr. Cowley. Oh, yes? We're at the Biograph Theater. Dillinger? Yes, sir. We ought to be leaving here in 20 minutes or so. 
cartoon in the newsreel. Right. Johnny's not wearing a coat. Blue sports shirt. Dark glasses and a straw hat. Thanks, Anna. That fella Hitler, he's a comer, huh? Oh, it's hot. Even with the air conditioning, it's so hot. Let's get out and get some beer. Want to go with us and get some beer, Annie? No, I'm going home. Well, we were just talking about... Do what you want. I'm going home. Oh, who's afraid of the big bad wolf? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy, that heat hits you like... You feel it, Molly? What? The heat, you feel it. Yeah. Well, we'll go someplace and you get us. You two go on, I'll Johnny, go Johnny Dillinger, huh? FBI, Johnny. Don't go for your You're Johnny. not going to... I said don't go for it. Oh! Annie! Annie! Johnny! Johnny! Did you hear him? He called for me. I kind of thought he would. Hey! Hey, look, it's Dillinger! It's John Dillinger! Hey, look! Look, it's John Dillinger. Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Van Heflin. This is Harlow Wilcox for Autolite, the world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. In 28 plants from coast to coast, the men and women of Autolite build over 400 fine products for cars, trucks, tractors, planes, boats, and industry. Autolite contributes its manufacturing experience and skills to the fields of transportation, electronics, agriculture, die casting, and plastics. The Autolite name is famous all over the world for products of unsurpassed quality and performance. In service, too, Autolite facilities are worldwide. Wherever you travel, you'll find trained experts prepared to serve your technical needs. So for superior products, always look for the name Autolite because from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Next week, the dramatization of an amazing document in which an unbelievable voyage is chronicled, beginning with that moment when Fletcher Christian led the men on HMS Bounty to mutiny. It's called The Revenge of Captain Bly. Our star, Mr. Charles Lawton. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is transcribed and directed by Elliot Lewis with music composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The Last Days of John Dillinger was adapted for Suspense by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. In tonight's story, Kathy Lewis was heard as Anna and Michael Ann Barrett as Molly. Featured in the cast were Joseph Kearns, Tom Brown, Roy Glenn, Harley Bear, Sam Edwards, Jimmy Eagles, and Joseph Granby. Van Heflin appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, Producers of the picture Three Coins in the Fountain in Cinemascope and Technicolor. And remember, next week, Mr. Charles Lawton in The Revenge of Captain Bly. You can buy Autolite Original Service Parts, Autolite Standard or Resistor Type Spark Plugs, or Autolite Stay Full Batteries at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. This is the CBS Radio Network.